Hello, and welcome to another one of our TAC tutorial sessions. In this tutorial, we're going to be talking about Maya and the V-Ray plugin, and how to install the AXF plugin to allow you to load in AXFs directly into the V-Ray inside of Maya. But before we jump into that, let's go over exactly what the TAC or the Total Appearance Capture system is. Here at Axrite, we deal with a lot with color, and and the TAC deals a lot with materials. So materials that we want to bring from the physical into the digital realm have to do with a lot more than just color. And we'll go into exactly what all that includes. Because appearance is, like I said, more than just color and it's more than just a simple picture. But it's the visual sensation through which an object is perceived to have attributes such as color, texture, gloss, transparency, translucency, and more. So a material is a lot more than just just taking a picture and bringing it into your computer. The TAC7 scanner does all of that and breaks it down into the different maps that you are going to use in order to have full control over your digital material. So one of the big things that the TAC7 does exceedingly well is the high level of accuracy that it has. Now you could go on your computer and create a version of your material, but it would not be as hyper accurate as a scanner would. And now a regular texture scanner doesn't get all of the different types of maps and whatnot brought in that the TAC7 and the AXF file system is able to create. This is because the TAC7 has a structured light projector, four industrial grade cameras, 32 white LED point light sources, eight spectral filter wheels, and variable linear light scanner. So all of that is able to capture the photos and the data and the different maps that your material has and digitizes it. So the AXF is what houses all of this information and it is able to create all of these maps that your material has as well as storing important information and metadata. In a scanned material you're going to have multiple maps that you're going to have. You're going to have your diffuse, height, normals, roughness, and specular just to name a few. And different materials are going to have different types of maps. And what's great about the TAC is it's able to capture these different types of maps and allow you a high level of accuracy from that. So for instance, in this coated leather, you actually have two different types of normals that you're going to be looking at. You have your clear coat normal that gives off the shine and reflectivity, but you also have your leather texture that's going to have its own normals. And something else that we have now that will be super useful for not only you, but clients that you may have, as you're using the AXFs in your workflow, this Pantora viewer will be great to be able to view your different AXFs, to be able to see them on different types of objects that you want to load in via OBJ, and different lighting scenes from HDR images that you can load in as well. Now this is a free resource that will be available as well that you can see and grab from the link in the description below. And without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into Pantora to get a look at what we're dealing with. So first thing you're going to notice in Pantora to start something, you're going to want to start your job. And once you have your material loaded in, you're going to be able to go through and set the parameters in which you're going to measure and post process your material. Now we've been working with this blue diamond vinyl material for a while and we're going to continue to use that and showcase it. But as you can see, based on the type of material that it is, we know that it's a textile. It's going to have a displacement map, so we want to include that. It is anisotropic, so we're going to want to include that as well. It has medium gloss, so we can choose that. It does not have transparencies. And the model that we're going to base it off of is the GGX base. And it also has a uniform Fresnel. So from that, we're going to go ahead and go into next. We can pre-scan the material. This isn't the material that um, we're using, but you pre-scan the material so that way you can get a region of interest that you want and are interested in. And then from there, you're able to start it and it will begin to process and measure the material. Once it's done measuring, it will drop down into the post-processing where your computer will then pick up the slack and post-process all of the pictures and all of the data that the TAC7 created. From there, you're going to be able to go ahead and edit the material that you had, so that way you're going to be able to get rid of any um, gradients and be able to achieve a tileable and smooth material, such as this. So you're able to bring in cropping, you're able to do different types of 
uh, min cuts and linear blends to be able to bring your material into that seamlessness. And then once you save that out, you're able to load in, this is very similar to the, to the Pantora viewer, and you're able to then bring your material into this object, into 3D, into 3D space to be able to visually see what it looks like in, in 3D space. And so with that, we can go ahead and jump into, once we have our material created, what we do with that and then bringing it into Maya. The first thing that you're going to need is, of course, a copy of Maya and the V-Ray plugin. Once you have those installed and ready to go, then the easiest way to get access to it, to our AXF plugin, is going to to Google and just searching AXF V-Ray plugin. We will also include another link in the description below to straight to this page that has the download. But you're gonna go ahead and click on AXF plugins for V-Ray and this will open up this page right here. So you can go ahead and download that. Then in your downloads, you can go ahead and open the program, in which case you just follow the installer steps and it will install it. The great thing about this installer is that it will automatically figure out what versions of V-Ray, Max, or Maya that you have and install it correctly. It's all automated, so there's nothing you have to worry about. I already have it installed, so we'll go ahead and finish that up. Okay, now we're jumping into Maya. Now inside of Maya, we I have already a scene set up here. You can see I just have some simple primitives here. We have a box, a sphere, and one of those torso donut shapes as well as a ground plane and a V-Ray light. Once you have those installed, then we're gonna be able to jump right into here and start applying our materials. So we're gonna go ahead and open up Hypershade here. And you can see I already have these made, but from starting from scratch, it's really simple. You select AXF material and it's gonna create a new material here. And now if we go ahead and move this guy around so that way we can see what we're working with. You'll see our material and what we want to do is link it up with our AXF file. So we can go ahead and go into here. Go into x -Rite Tutorials and Tutorial Blue Diamond Vinyl. We click on that. We get another little node right in there. So now we have our material. And you can adjust the coordinates and the sizing, obviously, um, as well as 3ds Max, but in Maya we deal with uh, real-world scale based in millimeters here. So once we have that on, now we can see our material. We are going to go ahead and rename this guy here, so that way I can see what we're doing. So we have tutorial. Just like that. Now once we have our object that we want to apply it to selected, we can go ahead and right click on this and assign material to selection. So you're going to notice that nothing will have changed. Uh, you won't see anything inside the viewport here until you render it. But you will see our little sample so you can see that we are dealing with our blue vinyl diamond material that we've been working with throughout these different tutorial sessions. These different tutorial sessions. So with that, we can go ahead and bring out a little render here to see what we have going on. And just like that, you can already see we have our blue diamond coming in, just like that. And I have two other materials just to showcase some other materials. Like this one has a little bit of a gloss to it, so we have that nice little reflection going on. So you can bring that in with your AXF materials as well. So these materials are, all three of these are the different AXFs. Uh, you can see here I'm using these different ones. But very simple, very straightforward way to bring in an AXF into Maya and be able to apply it to a V-Ray material and bring it right in. Um, the other thing to note, obviously, is our renderer is V-Ray. So you'll have to change that as well to the V-Ray renderer. So that way these materials will show up when you render them. But as you can see, we have our render set up and it's looking really good. So simple enough, straightforward enough. 
Hope you enjoyed the tutorial and learned lots. See you next time.